Hey everyone, I'm Ian McCarthy of Lifting for Life and No Bullshit Bodybuilding, and today I'm bringing you another installment of the Lifting for Life Q&A series. Now, if you're wondering why I'm filming on this horrible camera from a couple of years ago, which is a long time within the realm of technology, and it's because I'm out here in Phoenix visiting my good friend Kevin Butler, and I realized, I originally thought that I wasn't going to film videos while I was out here, but I realized that was really an excuse and that I could make it happen. Indeed, I have my tripod and everything, and for the remainder of this week or this coming week, I will be filming things properly. But tonight, Kevin and I were training, and one of the things we decided to do in our upper body workout was cable pull cable pullovers, a drop set of cable pullovers. And I filmed, rather, Kevin filmed my set and I put it on Instagram and referred to it as a finisher, quote, quote, finisher or finishing exercise. And someone asked if I could explain the science behind this, and someone else uh, wanted me to discuss it as well, so I figured it would make for an interesting topic. And what's interesting to me about it is my initial thought was, well, there isn't really science on that particular topic. Now, to my knowledge, Brad Schoenfeld did a study, and admittedly I've not read this study, it simply didn't. Um, interest me enough for it to be something that I prioritize reading. But to my knowledge, he and his colleagues did a study comparing moderately heavy training to much lighter training. Uh, subjects were doing something like 30 reps per set, I think volume equated, and this was a training study where they looked at hypertrophic outcomes, and if I recall correctly from the commentary I saw, the outcomes were similar. And if what I'm remembering is correct, this would one could reasonably reasonably conclude on this basis that light training to failure can produce comparable muscle gain as heavier training to failure, assuming volume is the same. In addition, there was a knee extension, aka leg extension study done in 2012. I'm trying to remember the author's name, but I'm not remembering. Uh, but they compared, there were three different groups one was one set to failure, another was three sets to failure, and then a third group was also three sets to failure, but the percentages were different, so the loads were different, but the number of sets to failure were the same. And interestingly, in those two three sets to failure groups, and they looked at hypertrophy over time, hypertrophy was very, very similar. So, and one of those groups I think was working with 30% of their one rep max. So this, again, would... I think leads someone to reasonably conclude that lighter training can be just as effective as heavier training. Interestingly though, this isn't really the reason why I do finishing work like that, although I would say that is scientific support for it. Rather, I look at the benefits I perceive it as having that are independent of the scientific literature in that finishing exercises. So look at, uh, imagine a cable pullover, cable fly for the pecs, a lot of isolation work, knee extensions, maybe reverse flies for the rear delts, etc. These are exercises which are very conducive to training close to failure. They allow you to work through a full probably not all the exercises I just listed, but these exercise, this category of exercises generally allows you to train muscles through full range of motion, like full range of motion, which really is referring to the joint, not whether or not you're performing the entirety of an, any given exercise. And you're able to generate a significant hypertrophic stimulus quickly and in a way that doesn't significantly impact recovery either within one workout or from workout to workout. So what this means is that you're able to lay this on top of the heavier training without having some of the costs of that heavier training. And what's interesting about this to me is that in presenting this reasoning, I've not made a reference to the research I've mentioned or other research. And what I've definitely not made reference to is, look, there are these three studies which 
very directly tested finisher sets. They had one group do traditional moderately heavy training. This group did moderately heavy training plus finisher sets, etc. Maybe one group just did finisher sets. I've simply not seen literature testing this. But to speak to a more general point that I think this naturally leads one to, and, and this is a this has practical implications not just in the context of are you going to do a cable pullover, but many things. I don't think that every training technique needs to be directly supported by the scientific literature. I think you can be reasonable in training in a certain way, provided you're able to give good reasons, and those considerations might be supported by the scientific literature. So you might say, this is an exercise, and I, indeed I have said this, this is an exercise where you're able to train with a full range of motion, thinking in terms of range of motion at a joint, and there is scientific literature supporting a benefit of a full range of motion relative to limited range of motion. One might say, this is an exercise that one can do to failure more consistently without significantly negatively affecting hypertrophy, and one could then point to scientific literature showing that training to failure is beneficial, etc. So, again, I don't think we should feel that everything needs to be directly supported by the literature, because that literature, even though it's expanded so much, particularly in my perception over the past half decade or so, there's been a tremendous amount of well-designed research that's come out I still feel that it's limited enough that if we were to try to base everything we do directly on that literature, in other words, why did you do eight reps in this set? Because this study shows that's beneficial. I did three sets of this exercise because this study shows that's what I should do. I train this muscle four days a week because this study shows that this muscle should be trained that number of times per week, etc. If we could do that, that would be great. I think we would be in a better position if we had that much evidence and that quality of evidence. But given we don't, and we do have to make decisions as to what we're going to do, and not just broad, uh, I'm going to train muscles twice a week, but we have to make specific decisions regarding number of reps per set, exercise selection, etc. If we're going to do this, we need to be willing to make decisions perhaps on lower quality evidence, but that's not to say bad decisions, that's not to say decisions made on the basis of, of evidence which, simply, which is really insufficient and in leading to any kind of real practical conclusion. Rather, it's being willing to form arguments, like the argument I formed earlier of saying, here are benefits of this approach, and the cost is... It takes me one minute to do a set of pullovers close to failure, etc. So in other words, the expense of energy and time is very low, and in my mind there are clear benefits, so I think it's reasonable to do that. Um, and I think, I think the person who, to speak to a very general point, I, I do feel there's such a thing as hyper-skepticism, and in this case, the person who, in my submission, is hyper-skeptical would be the person who would say, nah, dude, that's bullshit until someone tests it directly. Um, because, again, I simply feel that in thinking in that way, that person is going to really constrain their decision-making and will ultimately make inferior progress because, to a large extent, they're not going to be able to make decisions, or if they make them, on their own view, those decisions might be arbitrary. So, those are my thoughts on the scientific support for finishing exercises. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think please, in the comment section below. Like the video if you found value in it. And the question of the day is, what is something you do in your training, or let's make it even more broad, something you do in your training, your dieting, 
any, I, I don't want to make it so broad it's not fitness related, but diet, training, supplementation, which you don't think is directly supported by the scientific literature, but which you feel reasonable in doing, let me know. Thanks again, guys. I will see you. I'll see you tomorrow. By the way, I have some sickening interviews. A couple of awesome guys have agreed to come on and talk about science. See you soon.